So what are some cool things that a company could be doing that'll probably cost a minimal amount of money, but that could drive them good talent? I like Cam's idea of throwing like a social networking community party. You yeah. Know, pretty much just get people involved. Just, like throw it in your office, show how you yeah. guys have a cool office, it's a cool atmosphere. You don't have to sit there and pitch them on joining your company, but hey, we're cool people. We like to have a good time. We work too, but we have a good time. So I think the less that you pitch them on that, the, yeah. the better it is. If you just, you know, throw party. Yeah. I, you know, I, I actually just had, had one work there. I actually just had a, I just had a candidate went through his first interview. Uh, and his his first interview was a social gathering. Yeah. Like we we introduced him. We, we basically we found him through us, you know, the standard kind of process and then introduced him and the client came back and just said, Oh hey, you know what, we're actually having X event tonight. Why don't you just come by, have a couple of beers with the team, hang out, like get to know everybody, see if there's a good fit. He came back the next morning. It was like those guys are awesome. Yeah. And then he went back in and did like the technical interview and went in and you know and proved his you know improved his weight and gold on you know on the other side of things also in another interview. But um, we talk all day long about how important it is to sell people. I mean, what a great opportunity to come in and in a small startup, especially, it's important that you genuinely like the people that you're working side by side with. So I think great example. And uh, Seattle does a great job of this. I'll, I'll prop my market there um, and say that they're constantly. It seems like every other night there is something going on where like everybody's getting together and networking and just hanging out and I think that the more you get your company flag out there in those circles the better off you are. For sure another work. good way is like conferences and making yourself known in all like the big conferences that go on in the open source community and Java whatever your company is working on but making yourself as uh, your company a standpoint within those conferences and that way people that attend those conferences will see that you're there and will want to join you rather than you have to, to sit there and like sell them on it they'll be like, oh, that company's really cool, I wish I could go work for them. And make it known at your booth that you're hiring. Like, stick right. a big freaking now hiring sign on your booth instead of just promoting your product. I mean, why not, right? I mean, you got yeah. potential candidates, potential hires walking around all over the place. Right. How do you use social networks to um, you know, drive talent to your company, like LinkedIn? How do you use Facebook? Like, we see, I see on uh, people's different LinkedIn profiles, I'm working at XYZ Company, we're hiring, come join our team, I love it here. Yeah. Is, that a good, is that a good idea, you guys like that? I think it is, and I think uh, a good tool that uh, clients can use potentially on those social networks is uh, kind of let them have an in into the atmosphere and for the company. A big part of it is the culture, the people. If they're having a good time, that's a huge pitch towards the company. Like check, like check out our last social on Twitter yeah. or something like that. Put so, a little so like a, a good uh, example would be a gaming company I'm talking with right now. On their website, they got a ton of pictures of them like playing video games during work and making goofy like animal things and having water fights. It's like, it sounds kind of like, you know, it could be a little bit dumb, but <laughs> but uh, honestly, candidates get a kick out of that. People that are open and people that they want to join their company are going to be uh, loving things like that. Makes it, it real. It does. What about mm-hmm. Facebook? I mean, you have, what, 150 million people on Facebook, fast growing social network in the yeah. world. How do you use social network to recruit? Or Facebook to recruit. Maybe this Joining is a, groups, you know, just shooting out emails randomly. Maybe this is a good place for those like. Maybe this is actually a good place for, like those super quiet. Like we kind of talked about like socially, um, just people who really yeah, I guess maybe like just really quiet. Like the engineers we were talking about earlier, like that it's hard to motivate. Maybe that's the best way to ask them. Be like, hey, you have friends, obviously. Like ping them on Facebook and be like, hey, check out. Um, check out your last couple of social events that we did or whatever. Check out this last project we were working on. That may be something for somebody who has. It's just not comfortable like walking up to somebody and like just you know kind of hitting them up with an idea. Maybe that's an easy way for you know maybe it's a more comfortable way for that generation or maybe that kind of person to to approach people. I don't know. A good thing about Facebook and this is kind of like an inactive route to go around it, but with the whole mini feed, with the whole like news feed thing, if I post pictures of me having a great time at work, everyone within my network sees that. And if I have a bunch of friends that are software engineers that are doing similar things to me, they'll see that I'm having a great time. They'll kind of it's like an inactive route right. to it. But it's the same type of thing. And if I keep, or like Twitter, if I always have like a bunch of status things and saying how much I love it, saying how great of a time I'm having, people will see that. It's kind of like viral guerrilla marketing web right. 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is it wrong for a CEO of a company to insist that every employee be active on Twitter, uh, put um, all of our openings on LinkedIn, you know, insist that they, you know, uh, promote their work on Facebook. That's wrong, no. Well, it probably rub some people wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, don't know, I don't see how a CEO could do that. I mean, things like, you know, well, they could do a lot of things. Yeah, they say do or. Yeah, but that's that's not yeah. property of the company. That's property of the employee. Yeah. I mean, you can you can ask, but you can't insist. You no, know, it's not. People don't get hired on to bring on more people unless you're an internal recruiter. You get hired on to, to write code. Well, unless the know. CEO made it like the mission like of the company to continue to attract top talent, 
you know, as a determination of like our future success. So yeah, part yeah. of everyone's job is to recruit whether you like it or not. I mean, I think if that was laid out upon hire, then maybe. I think if it wasn't, you know, I think it would rub a lot of people the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. So wrong, no, perfectly within their bounds to do so. I won't settle with folks. I was gonna say another good or bad thing about social networking sites is that you could have a candidate that you love, a company you need someone want to hire, and they check the person's Facebook or MySpace, and then see the completely different person outside of work. And then, you know, whether it be good or bad, you know. I was going to say, that has turned into the next reason I hired you. No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why call the captain left field? <laughs> I know, I like, kind of want to, not necessarily from the software world, but I know people that were getting into colleges, people like looking for other jobs not within software, they got burned by that. They would yeah. see pictures of them getting like trash on Facebook, them doing like stupid stuff. Yeah. And that maybe, and maybe that's, a, that's probably a good topic to bring up is the, is the negative the side. blur of personal yeah. and professional yeah. social networking, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's definitely a gray area with Facebook because it, it really just comes down to how you use it. You know, do you use it mainly for business or do you use it for personal? And if you're using it for both, then I, and, and, and the you could almost argue that in today's society, like, what's the difference? Like, there's yeah, a pretty big blur, true. right? I mean, people work from home, people are using their cell phones, they're texting, they're IMing, like, people they do all those same things. People are like, look like homes, you know, making it, like, super comfortable environments. Exactly, so. so what's the difference, right? Yeah. I mean, the lines are blurred, there's, like, no work-life balance, it's kind of all just what you do. Yeah, I mean, that's... Work -life balance. On that note, <laughs> <that's, laughs> need the work-life balance. <laughs> exactly. On that note, let's, let's cover a couple of news topics in the, uh, in the world. Uh, Yahoo to pay $36 million in fees to fight off Microsoft. Anyone give a fuck? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they already screwed that one up. Yeah. Time to call Yahoo people. Yeah. Uh, anybody at Yahoo want a job? There's a $1,000 app for the iPhone that does nothing. That's the smartest thing I've ever heard. I love that. I thought that was really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the All you get is a red jewel on your iPhone, and that's it. But it says you're rich. It says you're rich. You know what? I think, I, I think that all of us appreciate that because we live in Southern California, and more importantly, like in the Valley, where that excess is just rampant where we live in. Check out my iPhone. I'm like, ooh, look at what I have. But yeah, I, I look at it, and it's like, that's absolutely beyond brilliant. It's like right. a million dollar homepage. Yeah, a exactly. million dollar homepage. Barack Obama overtakes Kevin Rose on Twitter. The is nowhere in sight. Well, I think we all saw that one coming. I love it, man. I think it's great, man. Twitter, like something that like was complete like underground, like um, almost like a cult phenomenon, is now like starting to reach like the like the mainstream. Barack Obama's all over there in prison. Yeah. Canada. There were those stories phenomenal. about um, that guy that got like kidnapped and he got in jail and he like sent like a Twitter message uh, to like his, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. like his ring of friends to let them know that he's okay. And like there were a couple other similar stories like that too. There was that one, I think it was actually the earthquake that happened here a couple weeks back. There were people that were sending Twitter messages saying, hey, all's good because cell phone service was down. Yeah. So they had to send it just another route. I think it's for sure made its place in society as like uh, another way to communicate. Right? I'm, still yeah. fighting, That's what we need. I'm still fighting the whole Twitter thing. I, I, I haven't quite become, I haven't quite what's followed What's scary is that communication becomes so easy, you know, like through Twitter and all these things and what happens if those things get taken away. You know what I mean? Like people become reliant on that kind of communication and then it's like a scary thought. Like it almost goes back to the principle, like what the hell did we do before we had cell phones? Like does anyone there remember what time was like? Yeah. 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 What did recruiters do before the internet? <laughs> pagers, man, <laughs> pagers, <laughs> pagers. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is a good one. I'm going to read this real quick, and I think this could be a good little in for what we'll do uh, next week. But uh, a little article in Fast Company called The Skills Portability Factor, just talking about in today's culture how people don't look at jobs as a, this is what I'm going to like commit myself to. They almost look at it as a, this is who I'm going to use just to get my next job. So every job is really just like, uh, I'm using this just to get my next job. I'm using it to better my skill, to like get rid of some of my, you know, um, you know, Skeletons in my closet, you know, dirt, the, wipe the dirt off my shoulders, whatever, and then better my is it off the shelf, <laughs> and then just I use those this <laughs> <way>. <laughs> okay. and just use those skills to get a better job. So, what real loyalty exists in, in the marketplace, and how does the CEO of a company sit with that, knowing that they're paying someone 100 grand, 150 grand a year just to really improve their skills and just to kind of move on out? As long as they're seeing a value from it, then while they're there, yeah, then it shouldn't bother them. I mean, that's the cost of them business, you know. Taking a job isn't, isn't a promise, you know, it's just a mutually a beneficial agreement that's temporary, you know, it's not, I mean, how many people consider how long permanent? Your last these days, you know what I mean, and that's like, you know. Put that to you apart. Yeah, I think the only thing changing <laughs> <laughs> I think like the only thing in our world that changes quicker than the technology we recruit for is like this kind of the market that we recruit in and the way that people are looking at their jobs, I mean, 
I think it's just one of those things. It's uh, you know, Cameron, you put it perfectly. It's cost of doing business. Like you just have to look at it as um, you know, asking somebody to. Um, in my last job, my boss asked me to to make a two-year commitment. He was like, you know what? I understand that you're probably not going to stay here, you know, for a long time. What I'm asking is, if you're going to come on in this role, that you come on and you give me a two-year commitment. And honestly, I don't think that a CEO of a company can ask for more than that anymore. But I think I, I, I think boss can say that to me before. I like as long as I get it for two years, I, I'm cool with that. Yeah. But I think so. as long as the company keeps transitioning, they keep innovating, they keep changing their products, they keep coming out with new, like, cutting edge things, the people that work there are going to continue to want to work there. They switch teams, they switch products that they're working on, they start working with different people within that company and they'll continue working there. You raise a great point, and that's something that Amazon.com does phenomenally well. I'm going to transition inside, but I think we're out of time. We're done. Goodbye.